we present an interactive graph drawing approach that is controlled by using the persistent homology of a graph. The approach starts with a graph. It extracts the persistent homology features and represents them as a persistence barcode that controls the forces used in a force-directed layout of the graph. The approach supports two main types of control. The first is contraction, controlled by using the filter bar. As features of the persistence barcode fall to the left of the filter, the associated nodes are contracted. The second control is repulsion. When a bar is selected, the nodes of the graph are placed into two sets, shown using bubble sets, that are repulsed from each other. We now look at a real data set. We first apply contraction, observing how the various nodes come together. Once satisfied with the level of contraction, we investigate repulsive forces. Bars are hovered over to see if the associated features segment the graph in a desirable way. When it does, the bar is selected and the force applied. When it doesn't, the bar is skipped. Multiple repulsions can be combined to form a final graph of interest. We now look at four real-world datasets of U.S. Senate voting records provided by GovTrack. The first dataset is the U.S. Senate 2007 Co-Voting Network. Here, a node represents a senator or the vice president. Edges are weighted by how frequently two senators vote together. We start with a fruchterman rheingold force directed layout. Because the network is a complete graph, we would like to add repulsive forces to declutter. From the persistence barcode on the left, we can hover over selected bars to preview the associated feature segments in the graph. After selecting several bars with even split ratios, we can begin to observe the underlying political structure. To further highlight this structure, we apply contraction to the network. As low persistence features are filtered, associated nodes are contracted, forming tighter subcommunities. Once we have filtered all of the bars that aren't selected for repulsion, we can more easily distinguish senators who fall to the far left and far right, or between the two. From the center group of Republicans, there are three notable figures. Snow and Collins are well known for voting across partisan lines, whereas Specter switched from the Republican Party to the Democrat Party in 2009. Our next data set is the U.S. Senate 2007 Anti-Voting Network. Here, edges are weighted by how frequently two senators voted differently. This time, we select high persistence bars from the barcode that most evenly split the Republican and Democrat groups. After filtering the remaining bars using contraction, our layout emphasizes four clusters that isolate individuals of the opposite party. Investigating these individuals, we note that these are DeMint, Dodd, Biden, and Obama. This suggests that members of the opposite party were specifically targeting these individuals to vote against. Our third data set is the U.S. Senate 2008 Co-Voting Network. Edges are weighted the same way as the 2007 Co-Voting Network. In this example, we choose a layout generated with only contracting forces. A strong subcommunity is formed exclusively of Republicans, showing the unity of their party. Our final data set is the U.S. Senate 2008 Anti-Voting Network. Here, edges are weighted the same as in the 2007 anti-voting dataset. We select the highest persistence bar from the barcode, which has an equal split between the Republican and Democrat parties. After contracting the remaining bars that weren't selected for repulsion, the result is two tightly knit subgroups consisting almost exclusively of Republicans or Democrats on either side. On the right, we observe the Republicans who were running against Obama in 2008. On the left, we see Democrats focused on running against McCain and Vice President Cheney. Thank you for watching.